good evening all a warm welcome to all of you on this lovely sunday evening our bnp session we did the session last week as well and uh, we are effectively repeating it i'm not sure how many of you attended the previous uh, week session and how many of you are new uh, so irrespective of whether you attended the previous session or not irrespective of whether you are attending the session first time or not i will quickly run through the essentials of the bbmp budget and uh, after that i can go through some details and leave it open for any questions the idea behind this session is to help all the citizens all the bnp leaders volunteers and everybody else develop a better understanding of the bbmp budget which was unveiled about 10 days back uh, in the middle of the night without any prior announcement or anything of that sort in a way this session is important because this should give a good perspective to everyone on what is going wrong with this with this city why is it going wrong and potentially how can we bring about change through a very important aspect of the governance of the city which is the budget itself budget as you all uh, know and as you all are aware is the starting point of financial management or in the case of bbmp unfortunately it's financial mismanagement every household or whether it's a country we all have a budget with which we run and as we all know if the income is more than the expenses it's a very well run household or it's a very well run country on the contrary if the expenses are much more than the income it's a poorly run household most importantly if the expenses are spent properly or if the money is spent properly on things that we need to be spending it on and if you are able to maximize our income it will not just be a good budget it will be a very well run household or country or the city as the case may be and that's why the budget becomes very important so let me share the screen first with regard to the income part of the bbmp budget is my screen visible yes okay so i won't uh, go through this in detail because we went through this once last week but i will try to quickly go through the summary so the top two line items that you are seeing here are the gok grants and the goi grants that is the government of karnataka grants and the government of india grants a lot of people would be surprised to know that there is money that is there is income received by bbmp directly from the government of india as well and this is part of the original nagarpalika act that was passed where the central government reserved a good part of its own income to distribute directly to municipalities and one important concept i want to reiterate i read reiterated this last week as well but for the benefit of those who did not attend or who are still not aware of this there is always this uh, point that keeps coming up saying bbmp is dependent on the government of karnataka bbmp should reduce its dependence on the government etc now the latter point i agree uh, bbmp has enough avenues to uh, generate revenues income etc uh yes to the extent that it generates its own revenues it's great but to say that bbmp is dependent on the government of karnataka is completely fallacious it goes completely against the grain of the federal structure that was built it goes completely against the grain of how the constitution and governance structure in this country was envisaged so just to elaborate a little bit further on that for the benefit of everybody 
we all pay different types of taxes. And the biggest component of tax that we pay is the income tax. Then we also pay taxes on goods and services that we purchase, uh, which was earlier uh, going under the guise of VAT and excise tax and customs duty, etc. Today, it's predominantly the GST, goods and service tax. And then we pay our property taxes and other types of cesses like solid waste management says, health says, etc. So we pay taxes at three levels effectively. That is income tax, which is called as direct taxes. Then we have the indirect taxes, which is predominantly the GST today, goods and service tax. And we have the property taxes and cesses that we pay. The income tax that we pay, and it's not just us as individuals, even corporates, the income tax that everybody pays, and it's called direct tax because we pay the tax directly related to our income. So if we don't make any income, we don't have to pay any tax. If we pay, if we generate an income beyond a particular threshold, then we uh, pay the tax and it's directly related to the quantum of money that I earn. Indirect tax, GST, GST is called indirect tax because there is no correlation to how much you or I earn. If a product is priced at, let's say, 100 rupees, depending on the GST rate, whether it's 12% or 18% or even 5%, that is applicable to you, to me, to every person, whether a person earns 1 rupee per annum, 1 lakh rupee per annum, 1 crore, Everybody has to pay the same GST. It, it's not directly related to the income that we earn. Then we have the property taxes and all, which is, of course, related to the size of the property and the kind of property that we own. So the income tax is collected by the central government. It goes directly to the central government. The indirect taxes, one part of it goes to the central government one part of it goes to the state government. You would have seen GST is broken up as CGST and SGST. CGST stands for central GST. SGST stands for state GST. So if you pay 18% on a particular good, 9% will go as CGST to the central government. Another 9% will go to the state government as state GST. The property taxes and the municipal cesses that we pay that directly goes to the municipality or the municipal corporation or the panchayat that we are all part of. So all of us, every single individual of this country will be part of either a municipal corporation or a municipality or a town panchayat or a panchayat. There is no way any of us can exist in any region which does not come under a municipality or a panchayat. So the municipality or the panchayat's jurisdiction under which we come, that is the entity that collects our property tax and municipal cesses. And the way the constitution is structured, the way our governance structure uh, is envisaged and structured is along these lines. Bulk of the money that we pay is in the form of income taxes. That goes to the central government. The central government is not supposed to use that for its own expenses. The central government is supposed to use a portion of it for its own expenses, like building up our army, uh, paying the salaries of our armed forces, managing our external affairs, building national infrastructure, etc. But with the amount that they collect, they use hardly about one third of it for its own purposes. That is, as I said, all these national level expenses that are incurred. As per the uh, constitution, the state, uh, the central government is supposed to redistribute the rest of the money to the state governments. It is not a favor that they are doing to the state governments. It is mandated by the constitution. The state, central government constitutes something called as a Central Finance Commission, CFC which determines 
how much each state should get out of this money that the central government is getting. The central government cannot say that I will not give money to one or more of the states. If they do that, it is unconstitutional. The Supreme Court has the right to then disband the central government. So the state government is not dependent on the central government. I repeat, the state government or the state governments, whether it's a Karnataka state government or the Gujarat state government or the Bengal state government or any state government of this country, none of them are actually dependent on the central government. They have the right to get the money from the central government that is due to them. And on top of that, of course, they have their own directly generated revenues, which is predominantly GST. And there could be other forms of excise and custom duty, which are still there, that's collected, but predominantly it becomes GST now. So that is the state's income. The state uses a part of its money, that money that they have received from the central government and the money that they have generated on their own, they use a part of it to support farmers, to build the state infrastructure like state highways, flyovers, and other infrastructure, to manage salaries of the home department, for example, police. All the salaries that we have to pay the, the, the police forces, the civil defense, etc., people who protect us, that's paid by the state government. So about one third of it, they spend for their own purpose, which is what I just explained. The other part of it, they distribute it to the municipalities and the panchayats. Again, they are not doing any favor to any of the municipalities or panchayats. It's their constitutional obligation to the municipalities and panchayats so that they get adequate money to then spend for the city or the town or the village as the case may be. Again, just like there is a central finance commission, which determines the allocation from the center to the states, there is a state finance commission that will determine how the state government funds are allocated to the municipalities and the panchayats. There has to be a fair allocation. For example, the state government tomorrow cannot say that there is this panchayat which has 10,000, uh, let's say, uh, citizens living there and it can't say that I'll allocate 1,000 crores to them and here is a city which has a 1.3 crore population. I will allocate 500 crores to them. So the whole allocation has to be scientific, has to be dependent on the population, the area, and some of these parameters. So usually, the money is reasonably evenly distributed to the municipalities and panchayats on the basis of population size and some basic parameters that are used. So which means, BBMP is not dependent on the state government. The money that comes from the state government is a constitutional right that every municipality and panchayat enjoys. Technically speaking, the income tax that we pay, to put it differently, one way to have paid our income taxes, we could have said, I will pay one-third of my income tax to the central government, one-third of my income tax to the uh, state government and one third of my income tax to the municipality or the panchayat that I'm living in. That's a way we could have structured it. It will become extremely complex and cumbersome for us. That is why it is not done that way. That is why the system is built in such a way that the money is all aggregated at some level and then it's distributed uh, in a very fair and reasonable manner to the states and the municipalities and panchayats so that Administratively, it becomes easier to do this. I want to take a pause here. So as you see here, government of Karnataka uh, is giving the, uh, uh, you know, for example, for the full year 2020-21, the grants that were given was about 3,500 crores. Uh, the last financial year, the financial year that just concluded, as of March 21-22, we don't have the full numbers. They have given out numbers till December. If we extrapolate it, it comes to almost about 4,200 crores. The money increased primarily because there was a 600 crore COVID grant, which was a one-time grant that was provided 
to the city by the state government to manage the covid pandemic but anyways it's roughly about 3500 crores as determined by the state finance commission that's the amount that is being budgeted for this year and interestingly as i said uh, the central government is also mandated to directly distribute some money to the, the uh, municipalities the big municipal corporations and as part of that delhi mumbai uh, chennai hyderabad kolkata bengaluru these all directly get grants from the government of india any questions please do share in the chat window so that we cover it right here and if there are if there's anybody who wants to ask a question you can raise your hand uh, i want to cover this very carefully because i keep hearing this and very often uh, trust me it irritates me when people say that because uh, somewhere a narrative is getting created that oh the municipality is being inefficient etc it's not every municipality every panchayat gets this money or uh, somewhere a narrative gets built saying that oh if the state government and the you know a state government is governed by x party if the municipal corporation is governed by y party or if the in fact we i've been hearing this uh, thing suddenly in the last 2 3 years oh we need to have the same party at the central government state government and the municipality that's the only way to be get efficiently distributed in fact that defeats the very purpose of the federal structure that's been created if effectively people are saying there should be one party at the center state and the municipality we might as well become a china let's go with a complete model then then why have the central state and this thing we might as well become a a dictatorship right where let let there be one you know right or wrong i am i'm not right now sitting in judgment of whether that model is right or this model is right we might as well say let's go the china way let there be one party let's completely uh, do away with all the elections and let's just let let's have a dictator it could be a vladimir putin it could be a xiao ji ping or it could be a you know a dictator like we have in north korea or some of the african countries we might as well go that model for and if any of you ask the question please ask them this counter question because i am seeing this narrative every now and then where people are and people i think ask this question out of genuine concern oh if there is a different party at the center different party at the state different party at the municipality we are at the mercy of the central government etc please dispel those notions there could be a bjp government at the center there could be a congress government at the state bnp could be in charge of the municipality or it could be the other way around bnp could be ruling the center obviously we are not going to contest there it could be bjp at the state and congress could be at the municipality it doesn't make even 1% difference at all these grants are grants that have to come if the central government headed by congress says that i won't give money to the state government headed by bjp the supreme court will intervene and disband the central government if a state government headed by bjp says that i won't distribute money to a municipality that is headed by bnp high court will intervene and disband the bjp state government so let's all be very clear about this constitutional principle so that tomorrow we don't use words like a state government is at the mercy of a central government or a municipality or a panchayat is at the mercy of a state government nothing could be farther than the truth any questions any confusion any clarification that anybody needs i'm happy to answer those shailendra palas raised his hand yes shailendra i allowed you to talk can you you can ask your yeah, yeah uh, shailendra here yeah. thanks uh, for giving the update uh, shikan uh i could uh, see that uh, yes uh, you had a valid point but uh, my question is that uh, at times we have seen that the the judges of the high court they themselves are being transferred or they you know influenced by the uh, central government or at times with the state government so probably it is also a person who has to protect his personal in capacity so there have been cases uh, you know where the the high court is also being influenced by the central government or the supreme court is influenced by the central or the state government so how do we deal with that type of situation so then i think uh, again these are all very dangerous narratives i don't think the judiciary is you know there are obviously there is corruption in the judiciary there is incompetence and inefficiency in the judiciary as well where there are points of you know interpretation 
for example it could be a hijab issue or you know there are many other things which are not completely enshrined in the constitution where there is you know interpretation issue yes judges could go wrong judges could be bribed corrupted etc tomorrow let's say in broad daylight you let's say you know go and murder somebody and let's say it is witnessed by for a moment one crore people video videographed by everybody tomorrow can a judge say that we don't know what the constitution says about murder and hence you know let's say shailendra pal has bribed a judge tomorrow are we saying that the our judiciary has become so incompetent that a shailendra pal can bribe a judge to say that oh i have murdered somebody in daylight but the judge can give me a, a, a judgment in my favor absolutely not possible these are all, there are certain absolutely fundamental things these are all written in the constitution if there is something there are there are certain things which are there is no gray area in this if it is proven beyond doubt doubt that somebody has murdered a judge cannot come and say that i'll use my interpretation now to say that oh yeah this person can still be you know uh, acquitted similarly there are certain things which are there enshrined in the judi- in the constitution the judiciary tomorrow cannot just say that you know no matter how much of bribe is paid these are all very fundamental things that's what these can happen probably in dictatorships in a democracy those things cannot happen at all yeah i mean if there is a clear evidence yeah what what you are questioning shailendra is fundamentally you are questioning democracy uh, you are right if it's a dictatorship right that we are entering then that's a different issue altogether but not in a democracy fundamental mm-hmm. things mm-hmm. yeah no at times uh, you know if the things are evidences are there and things are very clear then there is no issue but it is always many on many occasions is subjected to interpretation and uh, evidence so shall i just yeah. to, i'm saying there's no question of interpretation yeah right this is constitution this is this is yeah. you will keep hearing the word uh, the term federal structure your yeah. word of the right yeah yeah yes 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 where is the term coming from it's coming from the constitution right right you can and these are all things that cannot be changed even with majority in the court there are certain things in the constitution that cannot be changed no matter mm-hmm. even if a government having 100% majority cannot change certain things in the constitution so fundamental mm-hmm. things so don't worry about those things yeah thank you thank you yeah uh is there any other hand that has gone up this q and a Yeah, there's an anonymous attendee who has asked does the municipality corporation get its funds directly from the central government or does it come through the state government i think this sheet if you are seeing, uh, seeing it that gives you the answer uh, a bulk of it comes directly uh, uh, comes from the state government for example 3500 crores and some part of it comes directly from the central government which is about 400 500 crores that's the answer um anupam ghosh has asked a question how does panchayat come into this picture say hesargatta and dbmp relation and funding so there is no relationship between a panchayat and a municipality so for example uh, we have uh, bengaluru limits under which you know bbmp or bengaluru itself uh, there are some parts of bengaluru most of bengaluru comes under bbmp limits but when you look at an area like electronic city when you look at a, a area which is beyond hope farm on whitefield for example the area beyond hope farm uh comes under cg helli panchayat it's still you know on the periphery of bengaluru but it's part of the panchayat um electronic city is part of a panchayat as well i don't remember the name of the panchayat uh, uh banner beyond banergatta right when you look at the banergatta national park uh, we have anekal there is an anekal municipal town municipal corporation so there is no relationship between bbmp anekal municipal corporation and the panchayat they are all completely independent but the state government has to allocate funds to all the panchayats and the municipalities in proportion to the population and the uh, size of and the size of the municipality in terms of area etc so a panchayat is very similar to a in fact i would i would go to the extent of saying that a panchayat is no different from a bbmp just that the scale of bbmp is very large a bbmp covers 1.3 crore people a panchayat could cover only 10000 20000 people that's all right so which means it's a it's a smaller structure right but the principle is the same uh, there is a uh, income tax goes to the central government gst split between the central government and state government 
property tax. So if you are living in electronic city, the property tax that you pay, the assessments that you pay, doesn't come into BBMT at all. It goes to that panchayat. And then there is a distribution that happens where that panchayat has its own funds with which it manages its own panchayat. I hope it answers the question. If not, you are free to raise your hand. Uh, on the chat window, I'm seeing something. Is the municipal is the money for the municipality given directly to BBMP? Newspapers carried out where money was given at the discretion of the MLAs to spend. Okay, uh, so Chandrani, um, yeah, good question. BBMP is a municipality, right? BBMP is the municipal corporation. Brihad Bengaluru Mahanagara Palike is the municipal corporation governing Bengaluru or the municipality governing Bengaluru. So the money comes to the municipality, that is BBMP. Yes, the money is given to the municipality. So there's no doubt about it at all. Now, the reason why the MLAs, uh, the newspaper articles talked about the uh, discretion being given to the MLAs to spend is because today there is no elected council in BBMP. Our municipality does not have an elected council. So it is directly under the administration of the state government. And since it's under the administration of the state government, uh, technically there also the MLAs have no direct role to play. Right? The state government allocates, then we have the uh, administrator and the chief commissioner who then decide uh, how it is to be spent. But then the administrator openly said uh, uh, that the budget was released in the middle of the night because of pressure from the MLAs and there were lots of pushes and pulls, urban development department, the CMC is something. So based on that, they had to bend and uh, uh, get uh, uh, pressurized by the MLAs. Once there is an elected council comprising the corporators, the MLAs have no role to play at that point of time. It's a different issue that the corporators are stooges of the MLAs. And they will listen to the MLA. So MLAs in indirectly have their hand in that. But officially, constitutionally, legally, the MLA has no role to play. Uh, the follow-on question is, is it under the administration of, of the chief commissioner or the administrator? Uh, it's under the administration of the administrator, who currently is the under the uh, UDD, uh, uh, Urban Development Department, uh, additional chief secretary, Mr. Rakesh Singh. He reports uh, to the chief secretary who in turn reports to the CM and then the chief commissioner in turn reports to the administrator. So that's the structure. Uh, so actually if you ask, ask me, the, the MLAs have no role to play. It's all informal. Even now, even in the absence of an elected council, the MLAs have no role to play. But obviously the MLAs pressurize the chief minister, uh, they pressurize the UDD uh, department, etc. And it's all more informal, nothing formal. Kamesh has said, why MLA should have an hand? This is where I feel it's wrong. Even BBMP was not convinced. Yeah, so Kamesh is like asking fundamental questions like why corruption should be there? Why misgovernance should be there? Uh, why is there no transparency? Why MLA should be involved? Yeah, these are fundamental questions. No answers, Kamesh. Uh, and that's really where uh, as a party, we have come in to start bringing about changes to the system. If we have one BNP corporator in one ward, that person does, will not listen to the MLA. And imagine if we have 130, 140 BNP corporators in the BBMP council, we don't have to listen to anybody. We are answerable and accountable to only one entity or only one person, I would say. That is the Bengaluru Nagarika will be answerable and accountable only to the Bengaluru citizen and nobody else. Right? Yes, of course, there are interlinkages, interplays and all that, but it's more to do with how we are answerable to the general. I hope this gives a perspective to people. So let's move on. In fact, Chandrani has raised her hand as well. Yeah, Chandrani. <laughs> So go as of right now, till the elections are done, if there is money to be spent for anything in the ward, for example, does the nodal officer have to take permission from the MLA to spend it? So again, uh, as of now, now that we as do of not now, have the current structure, 
the hmm. nodal officer is playing the role of the corporator hmm right and there is a ward committee that the nodal officer is constituting hmm the mla has no role to play in this at all the considering officer, that money is getting spent at his discretion officially correct absolutely so you are right chandrani constitutionally legally officially that is the way it should happen yeah so let's move on uh, but all we we all know unofficially unconstitutionally illegally things happen in a different way uh, can we fight that battle now it's a losing battle instead uh, as and when the elections happen uh, we'll keep pushing for that hopefully if we get good if we have more and more good people in the system can be changed the system can only be changed or cleaned up from inside right uh, let's say if you have a a uh, clogged uh, sewage network a clogged sewage network right you can't just stand outside and say that hey you know what i want that uh, sewage to go away sewage to go away it's not going to go away with that what do we do earlier of course it used to be manual scavenging we don't do this but today what do you have to do you have to put a machine inside it has to go inside and it has to unclog that thing and so that it gets cleaned up so that machine without it going inside you can't put a machine outside the sewage and uh, keep running the machine from outside and say that oh unclog 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 it won't so we have to go in unclog and clean up the so if you have a powerful machine the process of unclogging can happen faster if you have a mild machine with a smaller horsepower it can do it gradually so that's the analogy that i would make yeah shall we go on so we need such more horses in the system so yeah we need a yeah. lot of horsepower in the system so if you have a 130 hp horsepower system that is 130 corporators it can happen faster if you have only a one horsepower system that is one corporator it will still be used to start putting pressure from inside but it will take longer that's it yeah okay let's move on to the next part so out of the 10478 crore uh, estimated income about 4000 crores is expected to come from the grants then to have the income that is generated directly by bbm mm. so, so i think somebody wants to give me your people yeah so um the rest of the uh, receipts uh, totaling to almost about 6500 crores budgeted comes from its own sources i am going to just focus only on the main elements you can ignore the others because they are all not important property tax is the biggest 3300 crores 50% of bbmp's own receipts is expected to be property tax this property tax collection was about 2354 crores for the year before last last year up to 9 uh, months december uh, they collected something like about 2085 crores but interestingly there was a newspaper article that came yesterday which talked about the full year collections having crossed 3000 crores which if it is true it's a very good sign because from 3 2350 crores it has gone up to 3000 crores last year which means if that was the case then there is a very good chance that this year we will be able to generate between 3000 and 3500 crores which means it's a very reasonable assessment of how much can be collected this year that's a great sign uh, and there is a good chance that we will be able to collect this 3322 crores that is budgeted for the current year uh there is a big amount um, called as khata oc building related uh, by the way there is something called as other key charges that is the solid based management says for example let me go to the details sheet which will give you a little bit more of a perspective here so there are breakups of the government of karnataka grants government of india grants even property tax uh, has multiple components there is the property tax itself then there is a service charge in view of property tax which they charge to some people which is a very small amount 
Then there is interest on arrears and penalties. Uh, again, I mentioned this last week. For those of you who have been slapped with those notices, you will know this. But usually, it's charged on defaulters. But last year there was one new thing that came up. Uh, anyway, we will discuss that separately. Uh, by the way, Achutrav has a question: How is the distribution of BBMP funds done among wards? Uh, we'll come to that. You know how BBMP spends its money. Uh, that comes in the next part. We'll we'll come to that. Uh, then you have your other key charges. There is a health says, the solid waste management says. Uh, there is improvement charges and stamp duties. Uh, the health says is the uh, biggest component. Uh, then you have the other surcharge and all that, uh, which is expected to generate a reasonable amount of money. Uh, that is the other key charges, which was supposed to be 751 crores. Um, this was 470 crores year before last, and about 500 crores. I think there is an over assessment here, but then even if it is 600 crores, it doesn't make a material difference. But I think uh, 550 to 600 crores seems like a reasonable estimate. Uh, there is a Kata and OC building related. Uh, which was 236 crores last year, a year before last. And for some reason, that amount seems to have come down last year. This year, they're expecting a 346 crores out of the regular Kata income. And there is a Kata regularization scheme from which they are planning to generate about 1,000 crores. Uh, we have this property tax regularization, deviation regularization, for which they're charging an amount uh, there is a B Khata to A Khata. So they're trying to do a one-time exercise for which they're budgeting about 1,000 crores, which is a one-time receipt, which they're budgeting for this year. I will completely discount that because uh, there is a Akrama Sakrama scheme, which is there in the Supreme Court. If they try to do it, uh, there are lots of complications. BNP as a party will fight against this, uh, not because we don't want properties to be regularized, but because the system that is currently in place is also a horrible system. Even today, the process of occupancy certificate, Kata, etc., is riddled with corruption, incompetence, and inefficiency. Till that process becomes transparent, till that process moves online, till we have the comfort, conviction, and the confidence that the new properties that are getting re uh, registered, they will not go through the same process. We do not want any regularization of past properties to happen. First, you tell us how are you going to regularize the current process of new property registrations. Once that is done, once we know that on a go forward basis, new properties are going to be done properly, then you go and regularize, have a one time, uh, what we call as this amnesty scheme, which is there for income tax also. You might have, if you have underdeclared income, right? Then you, you have a special amnesty scheme. But imagine if you don't regularize the ongoing process, and you regularize the past property, within two, three years, you're going to have a fresh set of properties, again, coming up for amnesty. We should not have that system in place at all. The way it works is first regularize the system properly, make things transparent, bring it online, put a proper system in place, make it efficient, put timelines for things that can be done online also. Do all of those things, then go for the regularization process. BNP is against, I state this, BNP is fully and firmly against this Kata regularization scheme, not because we don't want the uh, deviant properties, which are 90% of the properties in Bengaluru are deviant in nature for the past. We are not saying that we don't want it to be regularized. We are saying Akrama Sakrama scheme is okay with us, but first get your current system in place. After that, go for an Akrama Sakrama, but then it's not in their interest. They'll keep doing this nonsense again and again and keep everything in limbo, which is not what we want. So I hope our stance is clear on that. So uh, the reason why um, I put it third here and not second is because I don't think uh, the amount is going to be uh, 1,346 crores. In my mind, I'm seeing it as 346 crores. 346 crores itself looks tough, uh, but yeah, we can get to about 300 crores through the, uh, the regular stamp duty charges, Kata charges, etc. So 3,300 crores from property tax, 750 crores from uh, health says, solid waste management says, etc. Then the regular Kata certificates, occupancy certificates, 
building registration charges 340 crores road repairs related people are wondering usually it must be an expense right where is it coming as an income uh, let me show you this is a very important part for all of us to understand what does this mean this means look at this duck services pro ofc charges 415 crores uh, road cutting permission fees road cutting permission fees 55 crores road cutting and restoration charges 50 crores it's a very important concept for all of us to understand very often people say oh the road is dug up by bwssb road is restored by bbmp there's no coordination you know what there is actually no coordination that is needed at all the next time you hear this concept of coordination there is actually no coordination that is needed at all if bwssb wants to cut a road any road anywhere in the city to lay a pipeline or for uh, restoring some some problem let's say that is there you are repairing your existing pipeline number 1 you have to get permission from bbmp and how do you get the permission by paying a road cutting permission fees i hope it's clear to everybody tomorrow bwssb can think of unilaterally something but without paying money to bbmp they cannot start cutting a road so the coordination is already built into the system they can't cut a road without getting permission from bbmp so there is a need for coordination bbmp and bwssb doesn't even have to sit together and discuss it's a it's a unilateral right that bbmp has if bwssb wants to cut a road please take permission from me without that permission without that charge you can't it's illegal similarly once a project is done they say oh there's no coordination between bbmp and bwssb the money is uh, i don't know where it what is happening etc again there is no coordination that is needed as part of the project the civic agencies bwssb bescom which are cutting roads or it could be private contractors have to pay a road cutting and restoration charges to bbmp and that happens also that money comes to bbmp skitty when you go and attend a ward committee meeting and when you hear that oh uh, we don't have money for uh, the road restoration it's all humbug the money is coming the money is getting siphoned off for other things and that's why there's no money available for this ideally speaking there should be a separate escrow account created for the ward into which this money comes in and then it should be used only for this purpose but given the incompetence uh, corruption and misgovernance that money that comes it goes off to something else so the process the way it's defined it's all pakka so tomorrow if there is a bnp corporator we can actually ensure that that money is used for example if bwssb is cutting a road let's say a B, uh, is cutting a road in uh, hebbal uh, rt nagar sultan palya first main road cutting it that permission fee and the road cutting and restoration fee fair can be used to restore that road by the corporator of that ward and this is all practically possible just that today we have incompetent corrupt people sitting there who don't have any interest and that's why that money just comes into the system get siphoned off for something else so you have to understand this that bbmp is collecting 330 crores for road restoration alone for specific roads but the reality is it's all getting siphoned off into other things the rest of the items are all if you look at it they're all very small items um, plus or minus here and there doesn't make a big difference so from this 10478 crores i think the grant from the uh, government of karnataka and government of india pretty much will come property tax looks like very much possible uh, other key charges you take away 100 crores out of that from khata you take 1000 crores out of that then from other things let's say oh, they have over budgeted some 10 crores 20 crores 30 crores here and there it's not a problem even with all of that you reduce a 1000 crore one time khata and you reduce 150 crores uh, or let's say even if you reduce 400 crores from that the city still has 9000 crores available for it to spend 9000 crores by 200 wards is almost 45 crores per ward 
that we have to spend. So this is the money that's available for BBNP to spend. And we are talking of not the budget estimate, the actual money that will come will be minimum 9,000 crores. We don't have to worry about that money. As they say, when we are talking of, you know, thousands of crores, a thousand crore here and there between friends, how does it matter? So don't worry about that money. For the next time you hear anybody saying there is no money available, please ask them where is this 9,000 crores going? We'll shortly come to how it is getting spent at different wards, etc. That is the next part of what I want to do. So I'm going to stop the sharing and I'm going to put up the next screen, which is the BBMP payments. I hope my screen is again visible, but with a different file now. This is the uh, allocation of the 10,480 crores that you saw into various things, right? Where, where does BBMP spend it or where should BBMP be spending this money? For the moment, let's keep it as 10,480 crores only. Proportionately, we can always adjust in certain things. So let's take it as 10,480 crores for the moment. Let's see where does this 10,480 crores get spent. I would want to break it into two main buckets. One part is projects related. When I say projects related, hold on for the moment. That total works out to this amount that you're seeing by the side, 7,252.42 crores is reserved for projects, right? Then there is salaries, admin, rental, and uh, operational expenses of BBMP, which is the other part. That totals to about 3,228.52 uh, crores, right? This is the budget. So for the moment, Let's make th things simple. If you if you're not uh, saying, you know, if you believe, if you're saying that, oh, I myself have said, how is 10,480 crores going to be spent because it'll be only 9,000 crores. Let's make it simple. Let's say we make it 6,000 crores for projects, 3,000 crores for the administrative expenditure, right? A very simple split up. Two thirds for projects, one third for the um, administrative expenses, including salaries, including electricity charges, rents, uh, procuring of laptops, vehicles, uh, payment to power karmikas, all of that, right? Those things uh, can be at 3,000 crores. So I hope this gives a good perspective to you, right? About 6,000 crores for spending on projects, about 3,000 crores. This 3,000 crores has to be spent uh, irrespective of uh, anything else that we do, right? Uh, because uh, you have, um, let's say employees of BBMP, officers, those people will be there irrespective of uh, how many projects are being undertaken. Power karmikas will be there, 18,000 power karmikas that cannot change. Whatever that budget is, I think we have to allocate for this. I hope this part is reasonably clear. So let's see. Again, I'm going back to the same 10,480 crores because that is the budget. Uh, you can always proportionately adjust each of these items. We can say instead of 3,300 crores here, it could be 2,800 crores. It doesn't materially change things uh, significantly, right? So, or we could say even 2,500 crores. So, when I say projects, what does projects mean? Project means nothing but, uh, let's say, a road that is being laid is a project. Potholes that are getting fixed is a project. A lake cleanup that gets done is a project. A storm water drain cleaning up is a project. Tree plantation is a project. Replacement of street lights that you would see uh, that uh, are there, that's a project, right? So anything or maintenance of a park is a project, right? There again, there are two types. There are projects which you have to do afresh. A, a road that has to be completely relayed is a new project. Whereas a pothole that has to be filled is maintenance. So I want to distinguish here between two parts in case you have not seen this. 
out of the 7,252 crores, if you look at these first five line items, which totals to about 5,000 crores, these are new projects. Whereas, if you look at these next items, maintenance of roads, maintenance of landfills, maintenance of other public amenities, parks and trees maintenance, BBMP schools maintenance and programs, these are all in the form of maintenance. But what that means is, I, when you talk of completely relaying a road, that is a project, a new project. Whereas when you're talking of filling up a pothole, that is maintenance of a road. When you're talking of completely overhauling a footpath system, that is a new project. If you're replacing a few broken slabs, that is maintenance. If you're going to do completely take away the poles for the street lights and say that I'm going to replace it with completely new poles, that's a new project. If you're going to replace a, a, a bulb that has gotten fused in that street light and replace it with a, a new bulb, that is maintenance. If you're going to completely redo a new pack, right, and say that I'm going to, uh, let's say, build some new granite benches, uh, I'm going to, you know, uh, just dig it up and re 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 reload it with new plants, etc. That's a new project. But the ongoing thing where I engage a, a gardener who will go and, um, let's say, uh, you know, uh, maintain it with water, with some uh, chemicals, etc. That's maintenance. So we have to understand the difference between projects, which is capital expenditure, and maintenance, which is more recurring ongoing expenditure. So out of the 7,252 crores, 5,000 crores is reserved for new projects. 2,250 crores is reserved for maintenance of the amenities. I hope that part is very clear. By projects, uh, this is where this 3,329 crores, the way it should be done. And this is where there was a very relevant question that Achutra had asked. How does it get allocated between BBMP wards? Technically speaking, BBMP should be looking at the area and the road length that is there in every ward and should be doing a proportionate allocation. It's a very simple concept, actually. In fact, I would even go to the extent of saying area also is not a right proxy because there are some wards where there are huge lakes, right? That will cover up area. But whether it's a small lake or a big lake, it has to be maintained more or less in the same way. So the more, the better proxy to look at is road length. When you look at BBMP management, you can look at it as a unit of a kilometer of road. Look at it this way. What is BBMP maintaining? BBMP is first maintaining roads. That is directly proportionate to the road length. BBMP is maintaining footpaths. Where do you find footpaths? By the side of the roads. If you have more roads, you'll have more footpaths also. Directly related to road length. Then BBMP is maintaining stormwater drains. Where do you find the stormwater drains? Underneath the footpath. If it's underneath the footpath, what is it directly related to road length? Then you have street lights. Where do you find street lights? On streets, in the middle of the streets. What is it related to, directly related to? Let's say every 20, 25 meters, let's say you have to have a street light. Where does it come? You know, it's directly related to the road length. Then you have, uh, you know, very uh, fundamental expenses other than that also, which are, let's say, uh, uh, crematoria, uh, uh, sorry, before I came to crematoria, trees. When you look at trees, where do you find trees? Predominantly, again, by the side of the roads. So if you look at bulk of the expenses that BBMP is incurring is directly related to uh, the road length. Then you have lakes, might not be related to road length. You could have crematoria, not related to road length. You have, let's say, parks and playgrounds might not be directly related to road length. But if you look at the proportion of expenses and the things that have to be managed, roads, footpaths, drains, trees, streetlights. Um, I, I would even say to the extent of saying payment to the power karmikas, etc. All of that relates to 
road length. So the amount that should be allocated to a ward should be significantly related to, let's say, road length. So a simple thumb rule, I would say, is if we have a 5,000 crore amount to be spent, the way I would do it if I were the mayor of the city or if I had the power is we already know what is the road length in each ward. Uh, Bengaluru city has almost about 14,000 kilometers of road length spread across 200 wards, which means on an average, there is every ward will have 70 kilometers of roads, road length. I would link it at least 50% or I would say even 60% related to the road length. Another 20%, I would directly allocate it based on the area of the ward. So again, if you look at it, Bengaluru uh, BBMP area is about 700 square kilometers. Divided by 200, average is three and a half square kilometers. But interestingly, you know what? There are some wards which are even 35 to 40 square kilometers. And there are some wards which are less than one square kilometer. So there should be a, a, a disproportionate allocation, but only to the tune of 20% of the budget, which gets allocated to uh, based on the area of the ward. Another 20% can be discretionary. Not everything can be directly linked to road length or area. But if I were to do it, I will break the uh, budget of, let's say 5,000 crores, 3,000 crores to be allocated to wards directly in proportion to their road length. Another 20%, 1,000 crores should be allocated based on the area and allocated in proportion to, let's say, for example, let's say a ward that has 35 square kilometers. Out of 700 square kilometers, it's 5%. So 5% of that 1,000 crores should be allocated to that ward. Let's say there is another ward which has, let's say, only uh, 7.5 uh, square kilometers. Right? That is one per or seven square kilometers. That is one percent of 700 square kilometers. So they get allocated one percent of the thousand crores, which is 10 crores, so on and so forth. And the last 20 percent, the council can decide. Okay, uh, let's you know, let uh, different corporators come back with their different estimates and requirements. The other thousand crores can be on the basis of okay, uh, council deciding it at its discretion. When I say at its discretion, at the discretion of Elected 198 elected representatives or 243 elected representatives who can do it. This is the way it should be done. I want to take a break here. And similarly, maintenance also should follow a similar principle. If you're talking of the 2000 crores, 60% based on road length, 20% based on area, and another 20% based on, let's say, uh, at the discretion of the BBMP council. Uh, this is not the way it is happening. Today, that is where you are seeing the MLAs or there are lots of pulls and pushes that are happening. They all, depending on their respective bargaining power, they're all trying to do that today. Uh, tomorrow also at the BBMP level, the council jointly design, but there are certain thumb rules that we can put in place if we are in the council. Any questions on this front, on the expenses, specifically relating to these projects and all? Again, as before, you can raise your hand or you can post your question in the Q&A. Mm -hmm. I'm not seeing any hands go up. I have not seen any question in the Q&A window, which means I'm assuming that there are no questions. Lalita herself has raised her hand. Lalita, you can unmute and you can yeah, My question is, you said uh, corporators uh, do share their uh, estimates in the last two councils. Did we even have any corporator sharing the, or did they even have that knowledge or sharing this particular uh, data to the council on Absolutely. what is their estimate that they required? Absolutely, Larita. If you look at the, the BNP citizen portal, you would see that uh, there are specific projects in each ward for which money is allocated. Now, somebody has thought of it, somebody has gotten it approved also, right? It has been approved formally. These specific projects are approved in the BBMP council 
and they have been executed many of them have been executed subsequently that has been taken by the corporator in the council and gotten approved so every corporator does take projects from the ward gets it approved in the council and subsequently gets it executed so yeah that's that's the way it is actually done because otherwise how can one let's say uh, uh, for example can a bbmp commissioner sitting in his office be able to decide uh, uh, how 5000 projects need to be done impossible humanly impossible right even if there's a central people of 100 people sitting there how can they decide uh, how how do they know that a project in uh, kagdasapura 6 cross has to be done it all has to be coming from the ground up and that's why the corporators do play i think it's not a theoretical concept or a theoretical concept practically on the ground that's the way it happens yeah kizer has raised his hand kizer you can unmute and you can ask your question sir nan question en andre idu prati ward ge equal divide agutta idu budget athwa enadru yakandre nam ward alli lake illa park illa ground illa adu maintenance ge goskara enadru cut agutta less agi barutta athwa equal divide agutta ellarigu andre ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಡಿವೈಡ್ ಆಗಬಾರ್ದು ನಾನು ಮುಂಚೆ ಹೇಳಿದೆ ನಾನು ಅದು ಒಂದು ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ಒಂದು ಇರಬೇಕು ಪ್ರತಿ ಒಂದು ವಾರ್ಡ್ಗೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ರೋಡ್ ಇದೆ ಎಷ್ಟು ಸ್ಕ್ವೇರ್ ಕಿಲೋಮೀಟರ್ ಏರಿಯಾ ಇದೆ ಈ ತರ ಒಂದು ಕ್ಯಾಲ್ಕುಲೇಷನ್ ಮಾಡಿಬಿಟ್ಟು ಆಮೇಲೆ ರೋಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಪ್ರಕಾರ ಇಷ್ಟು ಬಡ್ಜೆಟ್ ಅರವತ್ತು ಶೇಕಡ ಇದು ಪ್ರಪೋರ್ಷನೇಟ್ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ನಲ್ಲಿ ಅಲೋಕೇಟ್ ಆಗ್ಬೇಕು ಅದೇ ನಾನು ಹೇಳಿದೆ ಆ ತರ ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ಸದ್ಯಕ್ಕೆ ಅದು ಇನ್ನೊಂದು ವಿಷಯ ಅದು ಬಟ್ ದ ಪಾಯಿಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೇಕಿಂಗ್ ಎವ್ರಿ ವಾರ್ಡ್ ವಿಲ್ ಗೆಟ್ ಮನಿ ಹೌ ಮಚ್ ಆಫ್ ಮನಿ ಎಷ್ಟು ಹಣ ಪ್ರತಿ ವಾರ್ಡ್ಗೆ ಬರುತ್ತೆ ಅಂತ ಒಂದು ಫಾರ್ಮುಲಾ ಇರಬೇಕು ಸದ್ಯಕ್ಕೆ ಅದು ಇಲ್ಲ ಅದು ಇಲ್ಲದ್ರೆ ಒಬ್ಬೊಬ್ಬ ಕಾರ್ಪೊರೇಟರ್ ತಮ್ಮ ತಮ್ಮ ವಾರ್ಡ್ಗೆ ಅವರು ಹೇಳ್ತಾರೆ ನನ್ಗೆ ಐವತ್ತು ಕೋಟಿ ಬೇಕು ನನ್ಗೆ ಮೂವತ್ತು ಕೋಟಿ ಬೇಕು ಈ ತರ ಒಂದು ಒಂದು ಏನು ಸೈಂಟಿಫಿಕ್ ಆಗಿ ಏನು ಆಗ್ತಾ ಇಲ್ಲ ನಮ್ಮ ಇದು ನಗರದ ಸಮಸ್ಯೆ ಇದು ಏನು ತೊಂದರೆ ಇಲ್ಲ ಆನ್ ಅ ಗೋ ಫಾರ್ವರ್ಡ್ ಬೇಸಿಸ್ ವಿಲ್ ಟ್ರೈ ಟು ಬ್ರಿಂಗ್ ದೋಸ್ ಪ್ರಿನ್ಸಿಪಲ್ ಇನ್ ಟು ಬಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ನೋ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಟು ಚಿಜರ್ ಮ್ಯೂಟ್ ಮಾಡಿ ನೀವು ತುಂಬಾ ಅದು ಬ್ಯಾಕ್ಗ್ರೌಂಡ್ ನಾಯ್ಸ್ ಇದೆ ಹಾ ಸೊ ರೈಟ್ ನೋ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಗೋ ಇನ್ ಟು ಸಮ್ ಡೀಟೇಲ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ how this money has been allocated currently now this 3329 crores plus there is something called as a discretionary grant and there is a welfare fund and there is public amenities right uh 5000 crores the way it has been allocated in this budget it's all in fact completely at the whims and fancies of the mlas which is very sad no elected council they have their own pushes and pulls so if you look at the details there, there is no detail available also in fact i would have been at least happy if every mla had put out a list of projects for the moment let's live with the fact that the mlas are uh, deciding it they should still do it ward wise in fact they are doing it ward wise also just that they are not showing it to us there is no transparency to this entire 5000 crores the projects discretionary grants welfare funds financial assistance new public amenities totally comprising 5000 crores if you go into the details it's all complete i would say sorry to use the word bullshit <coughs> that is you know they will say development works in ward number 195 120 and 170 and 180 etc and allocate some amount what project which area what type of work is it a storm water drain work is it a road work is it a lake work no details available at all right even after it has happened there is no transparency that is where B- bnp came into the picture at least for the last 5 years after the work has happened we got into the system pulled out the details of the work orders we have made it transparent to the public but transparency post facto you know the horse has already bolted that uh, there's a famous saying the horse has already bolted the stable you go to the stable the horse is no longer there you can't ride that horse instead when the 
budget is being allocated if you break it down what by what 5000 crores okay ee ward ge eshtu hana allocate agide yava project ge allocate agide idu road project illadre idu ondu storm water drain project tell us because there has to be some principle right you can't say that oh i will take can you imagine your household running in a way saying uh, let's say uh, uh, imagine there are 10 households in the in the in a particular area and let's say we are dependent on one person who's going to give us funds to run the household imagine you go and tell somebody hey give me 1 crore to run my household for the coming year 1 crore for what you make a budget how do you make the budget my school my, uh, child, my first son right uh, uh, or rather my son's school expenses uniform tuition fees bus it is you know 1 lakh per annum this is 5000 per annum so on and so forth my daughter's school fees is this much my rent is this much then my uh, annual entertainment expenses i want to go on a vacation i spend so much i spend let's say x on groceries groceries also there will be one estimate how is the estimate done i need about 10 kgs of rice 5 kgs of dal right you make an estimate right saying this is how much i'm going to spend and you know how much is the cost per kg of rice now isn't it the responsibility of whoever is preparing the budget to say how much is the school fees how much is the grocery uh, fees how much is my electricity expenses how much is my water expenses how much is my vacation expenses instead today you know what is happening one guy is saying hey i want 1 crore for what hey that i won't tell you give me 1 crore now you know what is happening that 1 crore that person is supposed to buy groceries for the people who he is supporting imagine the head of the family is saying 1 crore i have gotten i originally uh, the the budget that is needed to support my family members for their groceries and education is 10 lakhs but you know what i will give them about 5000 rupees let them manage their school groceries and all of that with that the other amount right 995000 i will go and spend it in a vacation to singapore or more importantly there is this very interesting thing called as my bank account right i will give this money to a grocery contractor i will give this money to that person that grocery contractor i'll ask him to distribute 5000 rupees worth of groceries to my family members and the other thing i will say hey you, you know what i am giving you this money you take 20% of that the balance 80% you transfer to my account hmm. if you as the head of the family if you do that is it acceptable to your family members or will you do it to your family members i want to pose this question to all of you i want you question uh, so i am i in fact i am putting this down in terms of your household budget you're all clear right there is education expenses your monthly rental income your uh, groceries your electricity bill uh, water bill etc right imagine you are the head of the family and you have 10 family members to support there is somebody who is willing to give you money and that person is willing to give you money saying oh i want you to support your family of 10 people right and i go and tell that person i need 1 crore for that now that person should they ask the breakup of this 1 crore or not they should but let's say that person is not asking here is 1 crore given to you now you go and decide now you know what is happening to this 1 crore this person is, is technically this person should have given a nice good 2 to 3 bhk house to these 10 family members or even a 4 bhk or 2 to 3 different houses instead what has this person done this person has created a hut a hut in which he is cramping all these 10 people and saying you go live there this person is now supposed to give proper rice and food this person is saying every day you guys have let's say one small bowl of uh, uh, kanji and some water for the full day and you live with that right and you know and education they are supposed to get educated in a good nice school by paying 1 lakh per annum instead now what i have done i have put all these children into a school uh, 
which doesn't even have proper infrastructure, teachers, etc. I pay hundred rupees per annum and say you go learn there whatever you want to learn. Will you, as the head of the family, or let's say if you as a family member, if there was a head of the family doing this to you, will you accept it, or will you not? And you know that the family member, that the head of the family, has gotten one crore, and every day you are going to get only one bowl of porridge along with one glass of water. You as a uh, student, you are supposed to go to a school which doesn't have any infrastructure. You are living in a house which doesn't have electricity, doesn't have water supply, etc. Will you accept? And I want people to post your answers in the chat. Will you accept? There is Anand Vecha who says no, it's not acceptable. Obviously, the answers are obvious, but but I want the answers to be posted by all of you. I want you all to think, right? If a head of the family member were to do this to you, will you accept? Right? Yeah. Slowly, people are saying, "Yeah, no, it's not acceptable." No. Yeah. It's very obvious, right? Certainly not. Absolutely, right? And that's exactly what is happening to our city. These MLAs are taking. a uh, 5000 crores divided by 200 right that is 25 crores per ward into let's say on an average about 7 wards per assembly constituency 175 crores you know what they are fighting over there are some mlas who are crying foul they are saying i am getting only 130 crores that person is getting 200 crores there is a fight happening like dogs as to who is going to be more corrupt right has any single mla as part of this bbmp budget put out which is there in this bbmp budget document which says even if i get only 20 crores for my ward 20 into 7 140 crores which is what i think a minimum that an mla has got has anybody put out details of each ward 20 into 7 20 crores for let's say my ward ward number 57 my ward mla s ragu 20 crores has he put out the details of which projects he is going to undertake for this 20 crores nothing now this person is going to spend 140 150 200 crores where is all this money going i have pretty much explained to you where this money is going whether it's a bjp mla congress mla jds mla they are all doing the same thing right no details whatsoever 5000 crores that you are seeing here enu lekka illa enu accounts illa most of the money 5000 crores is going the biggest expenditure that is going to be is election expenditure and assembly election is coming up i assure you minimum 3000 to 4000 crores out of this you know how it's happening the way it's happening is there is a contractor who will be asked to do some work that person will be asked to do a work for a project 20 crores the actual work will be done for 20 lakhs other 19.8 crores that money goes to the contractor he will retain about 1 or 2 crores for his services the balance money will come back and that money will come in the form of hoardings all these things you know election time social media spending and all of that that you see that is where that money is going to get spent so 5000 crores or let's take 3000 crores conservatively is the election they might as well have put it instead of project discretionary grant they could have very well put it as election expenditure upcoming assembly election expenditure they have put it in a very polite way project discretionary grants etc this is what we need to know. right uh then there is this uh, for the benefit of us there is still some hope left for what we can do provided we are vigilant this money is down the drain there is nothing that we can do now about this we are, we are, at bnp will still fight for the larger cause we'll see what we can do but at an individual level there is 2200 crores 2233 crores that is allocated for maintenance of each ward uh, and specifically there is a 1263 crores of maintenance of roads this 1263 crores the way it is being granted is uh 937 crores out of this 
has been straight away allocated to wards the wards within the city limits are going to get 4 crores each the wards in the outside so i understand that there are 132 wards which are within the city limits and 66 wards which are in the uh, zones that belong to there are two zones uh, which are in the outskirts uh, they are going to get 6 crores each so 4 crores to 6 crores for each ward that's what is coming to about 937 crores that is coming to the ward the nodal officer along with the ward committee can decide how this money can be used to make our roads better right there is money coming to footpaths drains also uh, that's also there as part of this but let's go and ask questions in the ward committee meetings right on what is going to happen to this four crores you first of all ask is our ward in a, a zone which is in the outskirts or inside if it's in an external zone 6 crores if it's an internal zone 4 crores whether it's 4 crores or 6 crores doesn't matter let's go ask questions tell us where are you going to spend this we can ask that question of the nodal officer and the ward committee members let's engage at least this 4 to 6 crores for each ward is something that we can question right let's do that rest of the things are all details uh, i covered it in last week itself there is a lot of mismanagement of this money itself right uh, right now i don't think we'll have the time to go through all of this i wanted to cover this part very quickly any questions on this on what we can do uh, there are questions that we are going to raise on uh, you know they are uh, they are talking of 82 crores budgeted for replacement of street bulbs all the street lights are estimate best case estimate is 12 crores assuming that every 20 meters of the city 14000 kilometers uh, or i think it's 14 crores uh, there are street lights and let's say you replace a street light every 6 months which is which is not required and it costs 100 rupees per street light it still will cost only 14 crores they have inflated that by 6 times now i i can safely say that they will even show accounts for uh, you know Uh, the bills not account bills for 80 82 crores but bulk of it will again go into somebody's pockets so we we'll, we'll start questioning these things at a fundamental level from pnp side uh, and put pressure on them and uh, we'll slowly start getting into that but at a local level us citizens you all can go and ask questions in the ward committee meetings so that's where um, uh, we'll be uh, lalita will, you know we'll be creating a campaign where we'll reach out to different people let's go attend ward committee meetings as teams let's go ask questions let's ask for accounts lekka beku lekka andre accounts beku andre we want it so we want accounts nalaku kotige lekka torsi show us accounts for four crores great starting point right whether you want to consult with us or not whether you want to involve us in the process of decision making or not let's even leave that out namge nalaku koti ge ee tara road maintain madlike prati ward ge nalaku koti bartta ide ee varsha ee hana ee budget neevu hege kharchu maadtiri anta namge lekka torsi please show us accounts for how are you going to spend this 4 crores or 6 crores is it a good starting point for us as citizens again i want answers can we do this can we go to ward committee meetings at least ask questions we can't ask questions of larger projects and all on which is 5000 crores and all leave the 5000 crores leave the 1200 crores your ward your four crores can you ask questions i want again answers on the chat window can we ask questions can we attend ward committee meetings basic accounts right we are not even asking us to take a decision after consulting with us can we just tell them please tell us 4 crores neevu ee hana hege kharchu maartiri ee varsha namge lekka budget torsi lekka torsi that's all that we want yes see so this is the way we have to start moving things forward 
overnight we can't change the system of corruption and all of these things that's happening that can start happening faster if you have more and more corporators but that is post elections till the time elections are held let's at least do this happy to take any questions and anything else that you all need any raising of hands any q and a chat window please feel free otherwise we can bring the meeting to a conclusion and move forward yeah thanks shri gandh it was a very informative session yeah okay i see something come up on the chat window yeah so i think yeah this uh, yeah so uh, this session was more to get you all a little bit of a perspective around the larger bbmp accounts uh, we have gone through details of every project code uh, you know we intend to ask questions every detail uh, there's a team now that's beginning to work on it Uh, we'll go through every detail. You know, uh, why do we need this street lights? Are we really spending it? Welfare funds? Where are you going to spend it? Um, in fact, I see um, uh, one of my good friends, uh, Jacob Kuriam, on this call as well. Uh, he, I think, uh, is uh, a, uh, one of the trustees of uh, APD, Association for People with uh, Disabilities. uh there is a significant amount of money allocated for uh communities like you know specially abled and disabled communities uh i in fact i would like to ask jacob jacob has apd been consulted for example in deciding that money i think it's about 15 crores allocated for the year um if jacob you are uh, hearing me uh if you can unmute yourself and and let us know has apd been consulted on that budget uh, no i don't think there's a process available for consultation so yeah i think like you said unless we intervene and insert ourselves into the discussion yeah uh, a lot of the money that is reserved for this gets uh, misused or misdirected or lapses yeah thanks jacob thanks for that uh, input and insight uh, uh, as far as bnp is concerned our principle is simple there are different communities that are definitely in need of lot of funds and that's been allocated if you look at the summary here there is something called as welfare funds right welfare funds look at the amount allocated here 604 crores and in the past uh, you know about 300 again what the last Sorry? yeah so there is uh, 300 crores that's been spent in the past and this time it's 604.75 crores allocated right now here is the welfare grants uh details that are there in fact there are some details available here itself if you were to come down i'm coming to the welfare funds this is an sc st welfare fund 168.7 crores allocated right uh, i am reasonably confident that the sc st community is not being consulted on that and this is the amount that i was telling you jacob specially able welfare fund uh, it says c schedule number g0503 i'll shortly come to that you won't find too much of details 36.673 crores allocated for specially you know abled welfare fund uh, in fact not just that there is an additional uh, welfare programs for specially abled there is another schedule there that is 37.06 crores so totally almost about 75 crores being allocated for this one is through the public works the other is through social welfare now what kind of public works right if i if i go here there are lots of details but you will find that It will all these things they will show as uh, these are all the development of SCST works. 
uh, if I come down, right, we can give you all these details. For example, uh, Jacob, you are one person I wanted to actually reach out to so that also, you know, APD should get involved in this. Uh, look at it, it will just say uh, construction of specially abled friendly toilets and ramps. There is an amount allocated for that. Uh, these are all amounts in rupees lakhs. There's 12.61 crores allocated for that. There's a 24 crore allocated for infrastructure and individual programs for specially abled. Right? No further details available. These are all the things that we are going to get into details and public pressure and pressure through our party as well. Uh, we are going about it scientifically and we are going to ask for demand accounts centrally uh, through BNP and we involve organizations like yours, hopefully over a period of time to start demanding more transparency, more accountability, more details and proper accounts for all of this to ensure that this money, imagine if uh, NGOs, citizen groups are all uh, taking part in this process, it becomes difficult to siphon off money as part of this. So I just thought I'd leave behind. At a larger level, uh, these projects and all, it's a big scam that is happening. Right now, it's very difficult for us to intervene there. But as I said, this thousand crores of maintenance of roads, we as citizens, at our ward committee level, let's intervene. Let's start asking for accounts. As citizens, when we keep asking for accounts, we keep asking for transparency, we keep asking for details. Change starts there. Let's get involved. As BNP, we will do it in a way where uh, we'll do it systematically in a structured manner. There are lots of us, including people like me who come from a financial background. We'll help simplify this whole thing for all of you. But it needs a lot of public pressure to bring about accountability, transparency, governance, and ultimately change. So I'll take any last questions that you might have on this. Uh, if there's anything, I think there is one hand Paridhi Rao, that uh, you know, I, I think that's Lalita. That's is that only you only? Or okay, I'll anyway. I so want to... one question was there. How do we know about ward committee? I got logged off and I logged in. Oh. Uh, there was a question on ward committee uh, in the chat window. Yeah, why don't you explain Lalita and we'll close this the ward committee in the absence of uh, the current council or the councillor? We have nodal officers. We have the ward committees uh, for uh, first and third Saturdays of the month. So it has to be twice a month. And there was a notice from the commissioner as well and in the press that this has to be mandatorily done. In the uh, I mean, if there is a holiday that comes on that subsequent Saturday, first or third Saturday, over the next week, it can be done. Sometimes it is spilling to the next weekdays as well. But ideally, Saturdays 11 a.m. is a fixed time. Now, how do you get to know? There is a list of nodal officers, uh, which is also there in our uh, citizen portal. If you go to namabnp.org slash citizen portal, uh, there is a list of uh, nodal officers given. You can please call up at the ward level, ask when is the meeting happening. In the case last week, for example, in one of the ward they have never had. I asked, when did you last have it? He mentioned last was COVID. I asked how many months ago? One, one and a half years back, then there's nobody to question. I'm putting all the pressure, though it's not my word, I'm putting all the pressure saying that we want the meeting. They come back asking, who are you and all this, right? So, but it doesn't matter. So to close, citizens have to participate. I think more and more citizens go show up. We can bring some change in the current system until the next election happens and see you all there. Yeah. Thank you all. Happy attendance in ward committee meetings. Let's do it as a picnic. Let's go as teams. Uh, let's go jointly. Let's demand accounts. Namge lekka beko. Lekka torisudu nimma javabdari. That is showing the accounts is the responsibility. I would even say the obligation of the uh, elected representative and the officials. Let's ask for it. Let's gradually bring about change to namma Bengaluru. Yakandre idu namma nagara namma hemme namma javabdari. This is our city, our pride, our responsibility. Thank you all for joining this session. Have a great week ahead. And next Saturday will be the next ward committee meeting. Um, and next Sunday session, 5 o'clock also, we'll do this. We'll take up a different topic if required. Bye. Thank you.